Hi, everybody. You can hear me? Okay, it's okay? No? Okay, now it's okay. Uh, all right, so I'm Krzysztof Debski. I'm a 3D artist from Pratish Mash from Poland. Uh, more precisely, I'm a look development artist. And maybe some of you don't know what's even Platish Image. So Platish Image is just a company that does uh, cinematics, uh, VFX for feature films, uh, animated shorts, commercials, and everything. But uh, mainly today we'll focus more on uh, the cinematics part. Uh, we do a uh, lot of cinematics for games. Intro, cutscenes, uh, cinematic trailers, and um, just to show you a brief video of what we do, we've prepared a, a little video for you. Okay, so there was some cinematics there that you could have been seen. Uh, there was Warhammer, Halo, and but today we'll mainly focus on uh, on the For Honor trailer, the one that was shown on E3 last year, not this year, but last year. And uh, For Honor is just a game uh, from Ubisoft. Uh, but uh, to show you. How a cinematic is done, I will just use materials from this game and from The Witcher 3, the Killing Monsters one, uh, to, to know what we will be talking about, uh, just the cinematic for For Honor. There you go.
just to, to be clear, I will just put the next trailer for The Witcher. By order of the Emperor of Nilfgaard, for the murder of the wounded, looting, cannibalism, you are hereby sentenced to death by hanging. Or torment. Don't meddle. Take the reward and let's go. Scorn imperial gold. Tough hunt. Tougher than yours, that's certain. Evil is evil. Lesser, greater, middling makes no difference. Come fit me. Bring her down. Do it my way. You like that, you bitch? Get the hammer. The degree is arbitrary. The definitions blurred. If I'm to choose between one evil and another, I'd rather not choose at all. Just make it quick, Geralt. What the? Sorry, first of all, sorry for the technical issues because uh, the videos appear a bit too dark. But just in case, if you're interested enough, you can find all those videos for Honor, Witcher, and other trailers uh, also on YouTube and Vimeo.com. So uh, you can see it by yourself with full colors. Uh, yeah, and basing on, on those two projects, I would like to talk a bit about the f workflow that we have at Platish Image in creating those. But uh, just in case, it's going to be a lot of, inf of information. So if you have any questions during the pre presentation, just raise your hand, because I know that uh, viewing just uh, new presentations, I have an idea. But after 40 minutes, uh, uh, the question just flies out. So. Uh, just raise your hand and I will just come to you with the microphone and I'll try to answer my best. So, workflow at Platish in making cinematics looks a bit like any other workflow, just with a bit of differences. Uh, first of all, we have to come up with an idea. So, the, uh, it's uh, from time to time it's the client that has the, its own storyboard and from time to time it's the director. So, we start with a storyboard. Uh, later on, basing on the storyboards, we um, we come up with concepts. Um, we, having all those concepts, uh, we can start two two different paths: the animation one and the modeling one. So, uh, having the uh, already the characters, we can start uh, the layout with the rigging and animation just to see how the framing will go with the cameras, uh, how long will the shots take, and, um, and then go to the simulation uh, of cloth. There's two kinds of simulations, the cloth simulation and the effects, like explosions, water, fire, and everything else. Uh, on the other part, we have the modeling part. So there we have to 
to think if we, if we want to scan something or we want to model it from, uh, from start to end. And then uh, we pass to the texturing part uh, with the shading part. So, so it gets more realistic if the purpose is to get a realistic cinematic. On the other uh, part, we have the hair grooming. So additionally to those two paths, uh, there's another one we'll create, uh, where we create uh, the hair uh, for the characters and the fur for the animals and everything. And later on, when we have all of that done, we can pass to the rendering part when we light everything uh, using all the cameras from the layouts, all the animation, uh, all the models, of course, shaded with the hair. And we can render it and compose it, uh, grade it, color, uh, make the color correction, the final color correction, and yeah, give it back to the client. Uh, so yeah, starting for storyboard. Uh, as you can see, the files are very raw because at first the name of For Honor wasn't For Honor. As for us, it was a code name. It was Hero. So uh, the storyboard for Hero or For Honor, for Honor as you prefer, uh, was a bit uh, challenging because uh, I don't know if you could see it, but there was like three plots going on. There's the there's the knight uh, word, samurai word, and the viking word. And on the storyboard, we, we had to, well, the director had to uh, mention every scene from what word is it, and of course, some additional comments. So that way, we had one of the most challenging storyboards that we did. As you can see, the colors mentioning every word that the scene w w came from. Uh, having that storyboard done, we could pass to the concepts and references. And of course, as for Honor, as it was uh, mm, uh, a game developed but by Ubisoft, they already had some assets done uh, that we could use. But main of all, the most that they wanted from us was the mood, to acquire the same mood that they had in the game engine. So um, it's still a bit too dark, sorry for that, but um, they gave us some, some screenshots from the game that were already uh, showing us what the cinematic had to look like and the realism that it had to have. So we had uh, all the forests, all the props, uh, the whole environment, more or less the lighting, uh, also the whole atmosphere. Uh, we had every environment shown in by night, by sunset, early morning, uh, afternoon, the, with mist, without mist. Uh, and having all of that, we could pass to the concepts of the characters. Uh, thanks to Ubisoft, we could uh, have we could have a lot of possibilities in creation of the characters. Uh, so we developed uh, some concepts for the samurais, the vikings, and the knights by ourselves. Considering, of course, uh, all, the, all the feedbacks of the client, because they have their own word, their own view of those words. But we could uh, make pretty much what we wanted with it. Uh, so developing those characters in general was pretty pretty easy, but later on we could pass to uh, developing all the details. And for example, as you see for the summarize, we uh, we did a lot of the, a lot of um, helmets. Uh, also, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, there was some types of uh, some types of armors. Uh, and colors of armors. And you could see it as designing the cloth of the character from start to end like it would be in real life. So you try, you try your best, you, you see some, uh, some versions without feathers as for the knight on the lower uh, left side. With or without weathers or the viking 
with references from the real life and also the, the blueprints of the samurai just to know uh, and of course for the modelers to know how it would uh, look like, how it should look like. Uh, having the characters of course you, you need the props and here are some, some uh, concepts and references of the colors and shapes of the shields. And for example, the environment. It's the Viking world, from what I recall. Uh, and this is an early concept of it. Later on, with all the feedbacks from the director and the clients, it turns, it, it's a bit different, but still looks, I think, cool. And uh, you manage to, to develop, um, well, you, you can see nothing there. Uh, but uh, it, this was this was the samurai uh, word. It was a creepy mood, uh, not that much. A creepy mood, mist with mist and everything with fog. Uh, and here's some some more some more um, concepts uh, from the environment, from the nights, from what I recall. On the upper part, we have a comic-like concept from the samurais, but the rest was done for the for the knight's world. Um, developing the concept of the environment, we knew that, for example, the, this is the samurai world. Um, it should look like realistic, but still it has some fantasy in it. So to make it, we tried to uh, develop it basing on references from the real world and adding some details that we would think that are fantasy enough, but keeping the realism in it. Well, you, you can see nothing, but those were some concepts for one of those shots uh, where two, when a knight and a samurai is, uh, are fighting in a dark tunnel. Um, and the shot was uh, um, so hard to light that the art director sh uh, got like 15, 15 frames of it and tried to, to, to draw the lighting, the mood lighting, uh, as, he, as he would uh, see it. So, yeah, but you can, I think it's a bit too dark to see it, sadly. Uh, well, the whole cinematic is dark. <laughs> so uh, here, are, uh, here, there were some references from the film and uh, uh, the gate that uh, the Vikings were entering in the cinematic. So as you see, dark enough. And having all those concepts, we could start with motion capture, rigging, and animation. Well, basically, Platish Image has its own motion capture uh, studio. Uh, where we can just achieve all the emotions uh, from actors and all the movements. Uh, I have some Witcher 3 materials here, for example, to see. Uh, this is, well, all those um, motion captures are helping us to get that realism. The animators would prefer to make uh, the animation by hand, but there's not such time uh, during the the projects to to let them so we're using that motion capture uh, and rigging of course with um, here you have the Witcher 3 uh, well the Witcher character making his gymnastics um, just to see as the motion capture works and if it works fluently and uh, one of our animators did a really cool breakdown of the animation from Witcher 3, so here it is.
Okay, uh, that was The Witcher, and now I wanted to show you more or less the layout uh, with the animation passes uh, from For Honor. So we started with blocking, but because it's too, too boring to see some blocks moving, uh, just to show the characters where their movement is. Uh, I will just, well, there's a video of blended passes from blocking to, to animation to the final animation. So there it is. So this was the animation part. Now the um, the photo scanning and modeling. So the other part of the workflow. So first of all, when we have those uh, uh, those projects, and now we manage to to make auditions for actors to come and just to get um, those faces that the director is uh, is looking for. So for example, as the, for The Witcher 3, we had the concept of the girl that was threatened uh, in the cinematic and uh, for the director it was the fundamental thing was the emotions from the features of the face so basically we had four uh, actresses uh, coming up uh, so uh, he picked just one of them and the same goes as for the uh, for the other guys for example here with the concept is different right but in the audition, when the guy came, this, uh, this actor came, uh, the director liked him so much that he changed the whole concept of the guy uh, to look like the one, well, like the actor. Uh, the same goes for the rest of the characters. Uh, later on, when you have the actors picked, uh, you go to the photo scanning session, right? Well, first you test the, their emotions uh, to see all the features, how the, the, the face is moving, the elasticity of it, and um, you try to uh, just to confirm that <laughs> you were looking for those. Uh, so here's the Witcher, still the Witcher materials. And our scanning rig consists in 32 cameras in our studio. Uh, so we, we can just invite the actor and in five minutes we can scan them. And uh, later on we just pass through a software where uh, the, the model is developed and, and we get all the, uh, everything that we needed. So here's some photos from the scanning session of the actress. And later on in the 
the model that was scanned and uh, produced in the software with textures, of course. That will, that's helping a lot. And here, a uh, sneak preview from 3ds Max from uh, the scanned model and the retopologized model on the right side by the modelers. Here, the scan of the whole body of the actress. And of course, what's very important, just to achieve uh, the, the animation of the face, there's a thing that um, when you want to get every possible emotion that a human being can do, uh, you have to recall that there's a set of emotions, like I don't, I don't remember the exact number, but there's around 20 emotions that you have to scan just to get, uh, just to get the, all the animations you want to, on the face. So it's very important just to scan every one of them and later on you can blend shape uh, in between those faces just to achieve every emotion later on in this cinematic. Um, here we have a retopologized with details model of the head and passing to for honor. Uh, well, basically I just wanted to show you how it looks in the Platish Image uh, with the photo scanning sessions. But as, for, as it goes for for honor, uh, the whole bodies are um, are covered with armors. So uh, the whole armors, uh, we didn't scan them, we did that by hand in ZBrush and 3ds Max. And also as it goes for in Marvel's designer, uh, because of the cloth sensation is uh, very similar to a realistic one. And here's some models from for honor. This is Galahad, one of the main characters, Apollo, with every details, with the wooden parts, metal parts. After feedbacks of the director and the client. And the environment. Uh, yeah, of course, we managed to scan a lot of environments till now, uh, but still uh, we use some of them, but we try to make it by hand. So here, for example, there's uh, a model of the samurai world uh, with the stairs where everything was done by hand. I don't know if there was some part scanned. I think from what I know, there wasn't. Uh, here we have the gate from the Knight's World, modeled fully in ZBrush. And as it goes for the modeling part, we have also uh, the blocking part for the model. So as you see on the upper part on the left, we have uh, the red part of the gate, uh, of the castle, sorry, uh, that the animators needed. To, to start making the animation, but on the right side you, s you saw the, the versions of the castle model fully modeled uh, in the same time. So the animators just used this, uh, this part, and meanwhile we were modeling uh, everything in details uh, on our side. Mm, uh, looking at shots, the, the main thing that the camera is seeing uh, is the most important uh, thing for us because a modeler can just start detail, uh, detailing and modeling every part of the environment, but still uh, some parts won't be seen by the camera. So uh, here we have some shots and the environment done uh, so the shot would look like the director would like to. So there's no, mod there's no need to model anything else in the scene, but what the camera sees. Later on, when we have all the models done, we can pass to texturing and shading, and you can't see anything there. <laughs> Me neither. Uh, so we'll just pass. Yeah, OK. Mm, there's some grounds. So we had a lot of grounds, so uh, we developed to, to, uh, to get some, some 
different grounds that we could blend between them and later on pass to the shading, texturing and shading the, the environment uh, of the castle, for example. Uh, for example. And later on to the characters. So a sneak preview of the characters that were prepared already for the texturing. And here's some characters that were already textured just before shading. Still, it's too dark. Sorry for that. Uh, the props textured. And yeah, later on, when you have all the textures done, because you can use uh, the best way is to make the characters lit as they are new. And later on, add the additional details like the blood uh, just using masks, black and white and the textures of blood in red, for example. Later on, we could pass to the shading part. Just to achieve uh, the realism that we were needing. And some tests of the armors. And tests in different light sh light lighting rigs. The same goes as uh, for the for the shields and and weapon, all, all the props, overall. Later on, you have the hair grooming part. So as for as it goes for the hair grooming, we we needed some beard references because mainly the the hair was used on Vikings. So we had a concept. Later on, we sh searched for beard references and the fur references. So having that in mind, we could start uh, making the first tries, the first versions of the birds and the overall hair on the, um, on the body. We got several types of hair because of the Vikings that were fully armored and wearing all cloth or fur coats. Um, they had some horse fur, uh, a lot of them. So those were the steps in achieving the details on it, on the fur coat. And later on, you, pa you can pass to the simulation of the hair. So mainly the, the simulation was done in on uh, the head, of course, and on the fur. Later on, when you have all of that, you can just try testing the, the fur on, on the lighting already on the scene. And here an example of her just in a studio, already made in 3D and, and finished. From The Witcher, this one. Having that, you can start, uh, well, we did some tests in simulation just to get the right, uh, well, we gathered some references and later on we tried our best to get that in 3D. So some fire ter uh, tries there because of the scene where the whole amount of arrows are falling and the gate that is uh, destroyed. So there was, that was the first version of the gate being destroyed. The director didn't like it. So the, the FX artist just ke kept working on it. trying to achieve what the director wanted. But the director didn't want the gate to be destroyed all over. So, and didn't want it to be opened. So we started to, to manage just the part of the gate being destroyed. 
And this, is wo this was the final result, more or less. Well, too dark to see, sorry. <laughs> uh, and of course, the simulation of the cloth. So th there was a lot of cloth on the characters, uh, leather, uh, wooden parts, uh, metal parts, and everything. So uh, we had to, to simulate every one of them, grouping them in colors, so it would be easier to see. Uh, of course, you didn't need the whole character in the scene, so it would be simulated faster. And the metal parts of the samurai, for example. Okay, well, having with that, we can pass to the rendering and compositing part. When uh, you have all the assets done, you try to get that realistic light uh, according to the moods and from the concept. Uh, you try in different lighting um, and those assets, uh, lighting that you are using in the scenes. And this is the more or less the final effect of the rendering and realistic mood light. But um, when you give that to composition, you try to to make their life easier. So um, what they prefer is to get the envi all the parts separately. So for example, they prefer to get only the characters on on a black background. So it would be easier for them to compose the, the final image. All the volumes and atmospheres also uh, on black backgrounds. The simulations. some characters renders also. Just by the characters, you can see already the lighting that is sunny. And the, from what I know, uh, okay. And the environment, for example, separately without characters. And giving them the renders, we give them a few passes so they can change everything they want. Here, an, here are an example of some passes that they get. The beauty pass, the diffuse pass, direct specular, indirect specular, the ambient occlusion, and the RGB masks. Those are just some few parts of those passes that we give them. Uh, for example, for this shot, the beauty pass on the high, uh, higher left part uh, is the main render that we gave them, but also the other parts are uh, helpful for them just to change colors. So, for example, the speculars of the metals, uh, the ambient occlusion just to add some details on, on the armor, or the mask just to get the, the hand part so they can just change, for example, the speculars in them or anything else. So here a shot, a shot um, with the row render here, and later on all the gradings. Well, we tried to achieve a, re a realistic render, so the composition didn't have so much work to do, but still, there's always some some details that they need to to add to get that final image. So knowing all of that, I just wanted to put uh, the cinematic once again, just so you could see it from another angle, knowing all of that, that was set.
that, w that was it, uh, as it goes for the cinematics. <laughs> if you have any questions that I could answer. I, I guess that you have a lot of questions, so don't be shy. Thank you. Uh, I guess from what I, what I saw, you do a lot of client work and stuff that you do for people. Do you see yourself making your very own movies or very own games sometime in the future? <laughs> uh, that would be a dream, <laughs> of course. Uh, I think that every 3D artist is already, when he starts, he's already thinking about his own projects. But of course, you, can, you have to develop um, your artistic part, your technical part. You have to, to get in mind that there's a lot of work in making animations. Um, and of course, uh, yeah, I, I'm working already in the industry more than five years and still think that I have a lot to learn too. Uh, there's always someone better that can teach you, of course. And that's a long, long way to, for it. But yeah, yeah, it would be a dream, and I, I, I'm still developing some some ideas. But uh, everything is ahead of you. Anyone else? So I'll ask: uh, How long and how many people does it take to prepare a cinematic like that one for for Honor? Uh, okay, uh, so f I won't tell you the exact number, but uh, a lot. <laughs> Uh, it's like, I would say, um, something like 50 person, six, maybe 50, 60 person, yeah. Uh, we we try to, to get uh, a lot of freelancers uh, to help us because there was a lack of men at Petit Chimash for that time. Uh, so yeah, a lot of freelancers helped us and um, we had like three, three, four months in making it, and those are like three and a half minutes, something around that, three minutes, around. So yeah, around 50, 60, I would say. Okay, any questions? Nope, so I guess, thank you for your time, and thank you for a great talk, and... Uh, thank you.